Hello, BookTube, and welcome to day five of Litmus, the enormous, hugely heralded BookTube event created by the guys at Strip Cover Lit, uh, in which for the two weeks of Christmas we take bookish prompts and BookTube prompts and writing prompts uh, that are really good. As usual, the guys at Strip Cover Lit have put together a wonderful event, wonderful, thought provoking prompts for each day. Uh, Although sometimes challenging, and sometimes pitilessly so. <laughs> the best book of 2018, good lord. And today's another one like those. Today is uh, your favorite quote of 2018. And it catches me totally unawares. <laughs> because at the beginning of, 2007, uh, of 2018, I decided, sort of without much fanfare, probably without much reflection on my own part, that f this would be one of the years in which I did not keep a commonplace book. Which is... Uh, you know, a book of the stuff that you that you glean from your reading. Not the reviews, not the longer impressions, but great quotes, great thoughts, great little bits and pieces kept in a commonplace that uh, in a commonplace book that shows you the line and then gives you an a the all important attribution so that you can put your finger on where it, on where it is that you heard that in the course of the year. I have done that. I have kept a commonplace book for many, many years. And now, having been scared out of my wits by this prompt for, for litmus, I will certainly keep a commonplace book every year going forward. <laughs> but, uh, but this year I did not. And so when it came to a question of my favorite quote of the year, the task in front of me would have been, to pour through all of my reviews for 2018 and all of the books that I highlighted, that I that I annotated in 2018, and I wasn't going to do that. <laughs> I just wasn't going to do that. That would have been a whole day's worth of of effort because I know, as you you know perfectly well, how you would act if you did the same thing. You would lose track of the point of the excursion and just lose a day. Uh, and I, I can't afford to do that this close to the end of the year. I am feverishly working up all sorts of last-minute obligations. Uh, so instead of using my own commonplace book, fortunately, uh, recently in the TLS, the Times Literary Supplement, uh, a pooba of the American critical scene, uh, a, a, and a great eminence in my own profession of book reviewing, Dwight Garner, uh, put, uh, gave the TLS a small selection of his own commonplace book. Uh, little bits and pieces, comments made to him, comments that let great lines or quips that he read in books or whatnot. Uh, and I thought I would read a few of those because a few of them are quite good. Uh, unfortunately, and I, I don't know what, what explains this. I don't know if it was the mood that Dwight was in or if it was the tone that the TLS wanted to strike. The TLS sometimes gets extremely off-color cheeky at the holidays. I think probably as a kind of institutional, you know, uh, raspberry to the sanctimony of the Christmas season. I don't think there's any good call for it, no matter what the reason is, but one way or another, uh, a full nine-tenths of this of these commonplace book selections by Dwight Garner cannot be read on a family channel. They're, they're incredibly crammed with uh, obscenity and, and, and gratuitous foulness of all kinds. I don't think... I think that in, you know, in 10 years, 20 years, when Dwight Garner actually publishes his his whole common, uh, commonplace book, or his estate does, I'm pretty sure that it won't be 90% Fs and Ss and whatnot. I'm pretty sure that it'll look like a normal commonplace book and not like the, the commonplace book of a registered sex offender in Upper New York County. But uh, one way or another, this doesn't. But nevertheless, there, are, there were three gems that I, that I loved and that I want to read to you because you might not encounter them. A lot of you probably don't take the TLS. And the first one is, uh, is, is from... Uh, the Spectator, from Peter Cook, writing in The Spectator. Uh, and it is, neither am I. And this is Peter Cook responding to someone telling him, I'm writing a novel. <laughs> Somebody came up to it and said, I'm writing a novel. And his immediate response was, neither am I. <laughs> that, the writers among you will know that is all too true. <laughs> uh, then the next one is from Seal Connolly. This is from The Unquiet Grave. Uh, many of you might not know. Uh, the name Cyril Connolly, he has been now completely forgotten, except in my own profession, where he was a shining prince, a, a great figure, uh, greater than Dwight Garner, as I'm sure Dwight Garner would agree, uh, one of the greatest uh, uh, modern book reviewers and book critics, book writers on, on bookish subjects. Uh, and he, he, there's a quote here from The Unquiet Grave. I have a couple of editions of The Unquiet Grave, and I, I really ought to take it down and reread it, and I really ought to make sure what edition I have. 
uh, he wrote The Unquiet Grave and he wrote uh, Enemies of Promise. And I love both those books to distraction. There's also, uh, if you can, if you ever see a collection of his essays, just a random, there have been a couple, I think, collections of his essays. They're wonderful, absolutely wonderful. He wrote a devastating piece, probably 60 years ago, on the, the whole world of book reviewing that is incredible. It's as sharp and perceptive now as it was when it was written. Uh, and would will make a, a great number of working book critics today cringe in self-recognition. Uh, but the line here that Dwight Garner quotes is, let us reflect whether there be any living writer whose silence we would consider a literary disaster. <laughs> and of course, set me back on my pins and needles, maybe a little defensive. I came up with a couple of names in my head. I, I bet you could too. But he meant it, uh, I think he meant it as a, sort of an, an acidic, commentary on the the uh, habit of the book critic circle to overpraise, uh, to call writers indispensable who are quite dispensable. <laughs> uh, and that is a constant worry. When you do this for a living, when you do a lot of this, you have to work against that. You have to work against that as much as you have to work against uh, the, the, the tired, biting, carping cynicism that comes with reading books for a living. You have to work against both those poles. So I love that. I love that line. Uh, let us reflect whether there be any living writer whose silence we would consider a literary disaster. <laughs> uh, and the last quote that I want to give you is from Nick Hornby uh, from his book, Ten Years in the Tub. He did a regular literary column uh, for ten years and then wrote a book and then collected the, the pieces in a book, added a whole bunch of, of extra material much the same way that I will be doing in 2019. I will be making my very first ebook in 2019 called The Year in Reviews 2018, in which I collect all of the reviews that I did in 2018 and preface each one with a block of uh, prefatory material about the book, about the author, about how I maybe, if it's interesting, how I came across the commission and what I thought of it going in, and then uh, append an, uh, sort of an afternote to each review maybe talking about the critical reception the book got elsewhere, maybe talking about how my thoughts have changed on, on the subject of the book. It'll be a whole, the whole shape of my reviewing year for 2018. Uh, and Nick Hornby did that. He did 10 Years in the Tub. And it was, it's a very enjoyable book. He's, he is a fairly eclectic reader, uh, which is kind of rare in the world of book reviewing. Uh, and his line, this is what I want to end with for litmus for today, uh, because I don't think I'm going to get a no vote. <laughs> his line was, books are, let's face it, better than everything else. <laughs> Enough said, as the, the, great, the late great Stan Lee would have said. Uh, so that's it. That is Litmus Day 5, your best quote. I've been hoovering up all of your videos on the subject, uh, and I'm hoping for more as the day goes on. Uh, and we will convene here tomorrow for Litmus Day 6. <laughs> Thank you, Book 2.